Hi everyone, today we have with us a retail icon from Lenskart, Sharad Raju. Sharad is a master in retail operations. He's also a master when it comes to leading extensive teams. Come, let's dive deep into our conversation with him today. Hi Sharad, how are you? I'm doing very well Swati, very nice to meet you. Thanks for having me over here. Thank you for coming. Yes. So, 160 plus stores and a team of 800 plus people. How does it feel? <laughs> I think it's still, uh, I would say, uh, I carry a big L board on top of me. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> a driving to school, I'm still a learner. I would say, I think uh, the journey has only been uh, very uh, cherishing in terms of uh, identifying opportunities. Thanks to all the mentors and leaders I've had who have shown me the way whenever I was stuck. Um, I think uh, the size and the number really doesn't matter. That's what I figured out eventually. It could be you know, one rupee today and tomorrow a thousand crores really doesn't matter. But I think uh, if I go back and reflect, it's uh, purely because of a, a fantastic team uh, that has made it happen, that I'm fortunate to find or rather put together a team like that at each step. How come retail? <laughs> What's your story? Okay, I would say sports has been my base, right? Uh, if I look at it, 2006 is when I re got reintroduced to sports. So when I started cycling a lot, my friend took me out. Uh, he bought me a cycle. At that time, it cost 13,000 rupees. And when I proposed that to my father, he said, what, it's made out of gold or what? Why it's so expensive? So it started off from there. Uh, we started doing long distance trips, etc. around that time. That was also the period when I came back from uh, UK. Uh, I, I thought that I had won the world. I have an international degree now and the world will be waiting. Come, 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 join me. It little did I know that it humbled me and I crashed and burned uh, on day one. HP was the first uh, uh, you know, company after I came back when I joined. I was doing sales operations, knocking on door. In fact, in the area of Whitefield itself, I used to sell computers. Oh, okay. Right, that's my job. And I made a cold call, a sales call once, and uh, this customer picks up and said, as a proposing, sir, I want to propose you know, X model to you. I'm really happy to partner. I would. He started laughing at me on the phone. He literally laughed at me on my face. And that had a profound impact on me saying that, uh, it really uh, shook me and humbled me to an extent where I really have to get my act right and I really have to reinvent my strengths and capabilities to do that. And I think that was a kind of a profound changing moment that happened to me in 2007, I would say. Uh, moving forward, I think uh, Decathlon was the changing, uh, as to you asked me why retail, right? Uh, thanks to Decathlon, I would say I learned core of retail, what it is to be able to execute, what it is able to worry about your customer, what it is to be able to think about your team members always. And every time there's uh, any exchange that you make with a customer, you're learning something out of it. And the discipline, for example, opening and closing of a store on time and closing, uh, despite whatever challenges and odds you have, you have to maintain the discipline and then showcase it. As things went by, I got exposure to different countries, traveled across the globe, they sent me out on opportunities. A 26 year old, you know, in within six months of joining, I was in two different countries. I went to South of France later, I was like, wow, I was in La La Land. Yeah. But I think as the values got exposed to me, uh, there was monthly debrief like this, sitting across with your manager and asking, what are your pleasure and displeasure on your job? Can you share with me? Uh, what is working well and not working well? How can I help you? When it comes to your mind that you have to give the best experience for your people in your customers on a daily basis, yeah. you will ensure the store is clean, you will yeah. ensure the stocks are right, you will yeah. ensure that you have satisfied that last customer, in case somebody is unhappy, you will ensure that everything is sorted out. So can you share some of the key experiences or milestones that have shaped you into the leader you are today? First, I would say developing good level of organization skills, thanks to the programs that I've attended and learned from best. Uh, the last program which I did was the Walsh and Dale Carnegie Finishing School. It is uh, driven by the principles of Dale Carnegie, but then it helps you groom yourself uh, to program of certified professional excellence, you would say, right? Mm. How to conduct, what to demonstrate, etc, etc. Any specific challenge that you can recollect, which was the turning point for your journey? In the journey where I started my own company, uh, this was uh, around two years into Decathlon. Oh, so you had an entrepreneurial yes. journey as well. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. So, uh, it was called Highline Retail Private Limited. So what was it about? Uh, my sports journey had begun, right? So with Decathlon, the distribution business and B2B, all that had begun. 
uh, but I hadn't, well, I wanted to try out, I was 28 then, I wanted to try out if, can I run a company of my own was a question that came to me. I became the first, India's first coach licensed from Harvard University to conduct training programs for skillful running technique. So backed by a product and a license for coaching, I started executing the business and got many uh, brands on board. Uh, obviously the business began, we did X number of business and we, I had to do marketing, uh, logistics, import distribution, planning, manpower, customer experience, the complete flow was under me. Right? So each aspect demanded a certain amount of time and involvement of yours and you are responsible for each of them. Yeah. Right? And the uh, bank obviously I had taken a loan from the bank mm -hmm. and I had to you know, uh, give the OD facility, the, the collections had to come on time, the interest was going to come even if you don't do a business right, for the yeah. month. Yeah. So tough times is what kind of nurtures you I would say as a leader. What do you think of empathy in the context of a workplace? <laughs> So I feel uh, uh, it's purely about thinking uh, through the other person's shoes, I would say, without being judgmental, right? Mm -hmm. uh, through this empathetic behavior, suddenly a very comfortable conversation opens up with the other person, mm -hmm. where genuine conversations can happen, where I or the other person will not be just saying, because I've got to say it, they will say it because that's what they truly feel they want to say. And I feel that is what is empathy. How do you foster empathy within your team, your circle, your region, within your people? Um, personally, what I've noticed is when a person feels hurt, uh, suddenly the weight is off their shoulders. Yes. I think that is the first step towards, you know, uh, enabling a proper conversation even to happen with the person. But I think the actions that you take to foster this particular habit of genuine openness listening properly to the person uh, without quickly judging at all but of, of course being very you know clear in terms of accountability that doesn't go away yeah. but at least having the conversation where the person feels genuinely listened to yeah. and responded to I think that is what is the key for this. So a lot of people watching this would want to know that as per you what are some of the absolutely essential skills or qualities uh, that are useful for success in retail? Uh, if I reflect on it, I would say identifying what are your skill sets early in life and then really taking advantage of it. I think that is the key. So putting together your own self-identity, your self-capacity, finding out how the company operates, mastering the KPIs to deliver it and yeah. finally compete hard to ensure you're in the leaderboard. Yeah. At the same time, you should be able to accept criticism, rejections, denials, okay, pushbacks, misconceptions that might be built around it yeah. uh, at the same time but never never let go in terms of figuring out how and well you communicate to your people and then at the same time maintain your self-worth. So Sharad, if you were to go back in time when you know maybe 10-15 years when you had just started your career, if you were to give one piece of advice to your own self, what would it be? If I think back, right, I would reflect probably on the time when I started my business, right? And at the same time, uh, I was switching, it was a big decision made, money was on the line, I'd taken a bank loan, family had supported me, I had to live up to those expectations. I just left a company where I was making my mark. I have to justify why I left that. At the same time, I don't even know what's up ahead for me. What I learned out of that is, I used to hesitate asking for help. I think that had become a habit for me, right? Mm. Uh, the piece of advice I would probably give now is just know that help is always available. For anywhere we might be stuck, for any responsibility we may be having, at any point of in life, be it personal or professional, help is available. So if I go back in my term, uh, I was the only one guy running the entire show. Yeah. Probably the way I would have probably changed that is, I would have sought for help saying that boss, I am probably good at marketing strategy, uh, sales and customer experience. I don't know the aspect of credit or vendor management, payment cycle, commercials, raising a bank loan, asking for investments, you know, making a proposal for an investor to come put in money. I don't know any of those things. Yeah. So would I have uh, sought help who knows that bit well? Of course I would. So that's probably a change I would make because back then I didn't ask for the help. I felt 
that asking for help means demeaning myself or someone will uh, perceive me as incapable or someone will think that I have yet not mastered all the KPIs. Yeah. I think that was a perception I lived with. Now that we have an opportunity where you are there, I'm sure a lot of us are curious to know the Sharat outside of work. What do you do in your free time or time of relaxation? Oh. I think my go-to place is outdoors, I would say. Just being there, especially the hills, I think that's my space where I really unwind and I connect and I suddenly lose myself uh, uh, to the sheer magnitude of uh, you know how small I am at the same time slow down my pace yeah. and just reflect on what all I do the simple example is Soumya keeps uh, scolding me for that but I once lied to her and I took the cycle and went solo riding for 300 kilometers one way oh <laughs> <laughs> so once I head out over there I think uh, it gives me the time to slow down reflect what is it that I need to be doing better uh, you know how far have I come yeah. uh, where do I stand in terms of improving myself yeah. how can I deal with people better yeah all right so would you want to recommend any movie a podcast or maybe a, a book you know which has inspired you definitely I think some of the titles uh, that have really shaped me or given me a new perspective of thinking is first I would mention Maverick um, so this book, uh, Ricardo Semler, if I recall the author is, this guy is a true embodiment of who I want to live by and I try to live by daily. This book is all about uh, execution skills as a leader, brutally honest and extremely transparent. I think this is like a wonderful situation for me to be in. Uh, the other book which comes to a striking example for me is, uh, is The Law of the Garbage Truck. Yeah, okay. As canny as it sounds, it's about not allowing someone else's negativity, criticisms and someone is having a bad day, yeah. don't allow them to dump it on you. Yeah. And people who have a very negative approach to life, how to maintain a one mile distance. They'll be right next to you, it's okay. Probably in the same meeting room or on the same call. Yeah. But still, how do you filter it out? I think yeah. these are some of the books which have really have a profound uh, impact for my own thinking. At the level you've reached, you know, in your career, do you still fail? And how do you cope up with those failures and setbacks? <laughs> I would say all the time, <laughs> right this morning also. <laughs> so I think uh, it's very normal to do so, I would say. Uh, yeah, the most important part is, I think, is to feel completely okay to show your vulnerability to others. It's totally fine. The only policy that I try to follow is that, and I tell my people is, boss, it's okay to make mistakes, fail, no problem. But try to make new mistakes each time. Yeah. That's the only principle I try to live by and I tell my teams also. Yeah. And that is working for all of us. I wish I could go on with this conversation <laughs> and there is so much to learn. But in the interest of time, uh, maybe one last question. If you could distill one leadership advice, what would it be? I would put it probably in parts. I would say the developing the ability to say no. I think a lot of us still struggle with that. And the second I would say is uh, never hesitate or fear of failure. I think uh, that everybody should put themselves in a position where they are accountable to things and they'll be forced to fail actually. Let them fail. Yeah. In, uh, and that's why I relate a lot of this to sport because there can't be winners in both sides. Yeah. Take the recent example of our own cricket match, right? Yeah. It's okay to fail. So is the world ending? No. One more World Cup will come. It's yeah. okay. In every game, there's always a winner and a loser. Yeah. Right? So keeping that in mind and at the same time, I would say always maintaining the dignity and respect of self and the other person. Because a lot of time this will be tested. A lot of time you will feel okay to cross that morality. Never do that. And finally, I think we must dedicate some time for our self-care and improvement and development. All right, that was an amazing conversation <laughs> and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed it too. Appreciate it. I mean, it was very, <laughs> I mean, in fact, the questions you asked was I've never, you know, had to think so much and then <laughs> dig deep into myself to bring out those. But thank you for the opportunity also to share my views. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank Sorry. you. Well, that was an amazing conversation with Sharat. I hope you enjoyed it too. Until next time, stay tuned, stay inspired.